All right, what's going on, people? Welcome back. I appreciate you guys tapping in with your boy one more time. I'm not on the water today. Isn't that crazy? I'm at the house, man. I'm relaxing. I'm chilling. It's a beautiful evening. I uh, had a little time to myself, and I got to thinking, man, a topic that I've been seeing just completely beating down the internet, swarming all over the place. I wanted to touch to on it with you all um, and open my platform on YouTube up to all of my watchers out there so you guys can you know, give me your two cents on this topic. Um, make sure you drop me a comment. I'm gonna do my best over the next couple of days to try to entertain as many uh, comments as I possibly can. I probably won't get to all of them, but I'm gonna do my best, man. And so the topic of the video says it all, man. And I just see so much backlash and so much commentary, uh, almost all negative, surrounding basically the, the progression of technology. And that hence the title of this video uh, has forward facing sonar ruined the game. And um, I'm gonna give you guys my opinion on it. I'm gonna talk about it, obviously, but I, I really wanna hear your thoughts and opinion on it as well. Um, it just seems that ever since this forward facing sonar has come about and we have been able to target these bass um, in places where we could never target them before, these suspended fish, they get pelagic. Oftentimes, once uh, the spawn is over, they get off the banks, they get offshore, but a lot of them aren't relating to cover. A lot of them just swim in open water, and we never had a chance to catch them fish prior to uh, every once in a while to come up schooling or something like that, and you'll catch a few of those bass. But now, you can specifically target these bass offshore in the middle of the water column, in bait balls, roaming, uh, you know, etc. And a lot of big tournaments are being won like that. And I see so many comments beating it down. Oh, live scope is like cheating. Oh, live scope is this. And it's not just a Garmin thing. Uh, let me be clear on that because we have guys doing very well with Active Target. Uh, and now Humminbird has theirs. I think it's called Mega Live, if I'm not mistaken. But the commentary has been the same, man comment after comment, I'm just seeing it so often like, oh, you couldn't catch those fish if you didn't have live scope, or you wouldn't be this, or you wouldn't be that. Um, you know, this, that, and a third. And so my, my take on this, man, and my two cents about it is, you know, bass fishing from the moment I started competing years and years ago, fast forward to now, has been nothing but time and time again, progression, 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 progression of the sport. The boats are getting bigger. They're getting faster. We can get to areas of the lake we couldn't get years before, right? Um, the technology on the electronic side has went from flashers to old school paper, you know, uh, sonar, all the way skyrocketing, and now we have forward facing sonar. And I don't hear anybody talk about this, but to me, this is just as advanced, if not as, uh, or if not a step above live scope we got cameras man you could drop a camera down and literally see there's no question then are they bass are they bluegill you know are they walleye i don't know what they are Psh, drop your camera down now you know for sure right but that seems to be okay with the general masses uh, it's you know kind of kind of weird to me but hey that's that's everyone's opinion but getting back to what i was saying my, my opinion on this is the sport has been nothing but progression from the very beginning and in my mind, live scope is no more, I keep calling it live scope because Garmin was first. Forward facing sonar is no more but another advancement in our sport. It's a tool, it's not a fix all. Trust me, I spend countless hours on the lake trying to hone these products in, get better at them, target these fish, specifically using this technology. And guess what? Oftentimes, I see one over there, I throw my bait over there, he don't bite. That's the nature of fishing, right? Um, something else that I'm gonna tie in that, that kind of reminds me of where, where, where this is going from an electronic standpoint, but on the fishing side, on the lure side, we all remember when the Alabama rig first came out. It was like, boom, the world went crazy. Guys were catching five bass at a time. You see so many posts, 18, 19, 22 pounds in one cast. Remember that? Five bass getting drug in, Paul Elias, destroyed them on Gville that kind of put that whole thing on the map. Um, I won my first tournament, that my first national event 
on the Alabama rig. I had never thrown that thing prior to. It was just like the Alabama rig came and it was just like, oh my God. But what people failed to realize then is that the Alabama rig wasn't really a fix all, really wasn't the answer. The best anglers still won with the Alabama rig that were winning prior, right? So it wasn't the, the Alabama rig didn't fix it, you still had those same guys winning. And that's just one of the points that I wanted to make with the Alabama rig, but then, uh, damn, where's I going with that? Uh, oh, here we go. But when we noticed, as time went on, right? I've been on social media pretty tough now for about 10 years. And as time went on, you stopped seeing them one cast, five bass videos, one cast, three fish, two fish. All of a sudden, the Alabama rig is not even really a player anymore. You know why? Fish got conditioned to it over time. It's still a tool. It still catches them in the right conditions, but it's not off the hook like it once was. And I think what you're going to see with this forward facing sonar is no different. Uh, down view, side view, down scan, side scan, however you want to phrase it. That was a huge thing that took over the industry at its time. And as time went on, everybody got that technology. It really wasn't that big of a deal. Everybody got that rock pile. Everybody got that brush pile now because people are learning how to utilize these electronics, getting better with them day in and day out. And it is just not uncommon to see a guy graphing over an area where you might have thought you snuck and put your little brush pile over there, but then here comes Jacob Wheeler or whoever, right? Idling by, got his side scan out 100 feet, boom, he sees that brush pile clear as day, puts a dot on it, now that's his brush pile, right? That's how the game is played. Um, and I just feel like forward facing sonar is just another tool, man. And it's absolutely not going anywhere. And let me touch on that really quick. Do you know how many active targets, live scopes, and mega lives are being sold um, by watching people, by people watching this on television and the, and the, and the YouTube and everything else and seeing how efficient these guys are fishing now with this technology? You have to realize these are the same companies that support what we do. Me and you, your everyday angler, they dump thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars back into our sport. It's not just all about the technology aspect. They sponsor Bassmaster, they sponsor Major League Fishing, they sponsor the NPFL, they sponsor your everyday weekend mom and pop tournament organizations. There's thousands of them across the country. Lawrence, Garmin, Humminbird. You see these companies, they pour money back into the industry and the sport that we love. Why would any tournament organization cut their technology out of out of this sport. It's not happening, guys. So I see a lot of guys bickering. I see a lot of old timers, most specifically old timers, professional anglers is what I'm talking about when I say old timers. Guys have been doing this far before me. And a lot of guys don't like it. And that's fine. But my thing is this. When the Alabama rig was hot and heavy and it was allowed in tournaments, if you didn't have one tied on, guess what? You're fishing for a second. You're about to get your head bust. It's no different now. The game's changed. If you don't have forward-facing sonar and you go to Lake Champlain, you go to Lake St. Clair, you're about to catch an L. That's just the nature of the beast. Your competition's so far ahead of you. They're so more efficient with their cast, their practice time, etc. You almost don't have a chance. So that leads me into my next thing I want to talk about, which is, man... Again, ever since I started fishing as a child, man, man, I worked my butt off putting in countless hours just to learn and get better. You had to learn this. You had to learn that. You had to learn graphing. You had to learn to flip. You had to learn to skip. You had to learn the difference between braided line. You had to learn the difference between floor carving. You had to do this. You had, there's so much you had to learn, but the key element there, you had to keep learning. When did professional anglers go, you know what? I've been flipping for the last 35 years. I'm done with this electronic stuff. I'm not going to learn anymore. And that's the approach I have with this, man. It'd be different if it was, okay, only 15 guys could have forward-facing sonar. You other 
you other 110, y'all can't have it. It's not that. Everybody has access to it. Everybody has the ability to learn it. Some of us are stubborn and do not want to learn it, and that's okay. But for those that take the time, put the time in, become better anglers, become more efficient, utilizing electronics, including forward-facing sonar, hats off to these guys, man. That's the hard work you have to put in, okay? That's the advancement of the sport. That's the direction the sport is going. Hell, in 10 years, it'll be something else. It's just live scope right now. It's going to be something else, trust me. And if you don't, and if I don't take the time myself to learn whatever this is coming down the road, it's gonna to be tough for me as well. I'm gonna start taking a lot more else. But guess what? I'm open-minded, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna to continue to learn, right? And become a better angler with every single tool that's in the toolbox. That's the sport of bass fishing, and that's the stance I'm taking on this. That's my two cents. So that's my little baby rant, man, on forward-facing sonar. Uh, I really wanna engage with you all and talk about it, so make sure you guys drop me a comment. Um, you know, I just want to hear it, man. Every time I turn the internet on, man, it's somebody's down in forward facing sonar. Somebody's hating, you know, we call it hating these days, you know, whatever. And I just don't think it's that bad of a thing, man. I think it's lack of wanting to put the time in, wanting to learn something new. Um, that's, that's what I really think it is, man, because it does take time and it's not easy at all. Trust me, I spend countless hours in forward facing sonar and it's still very difficult for me. Um, and that's just the nature of the game, man. So look, guys, my take home message for you all out there watching, never stop learning, man. Absolutely never stop learning. Use every tool in the toolbox that's within the rules, right? And continue to grow and become a better angler. So I appreciate y'all checking me out, man. Drop me a like, drop me a comment. Please drop me a comment and drop me a sub, man, and I appreciate it. We're gonna keep this thing rocking, but that's my two cents, forward-facing sonar. Has it ruined the game? Nah, it's called us a couple extra bass. That's about it. I appreciate y'all. I'll catch you on the water. See ya.